So, today, uh, it, it hasn't been a good day, today or yesterday. Two unexpected and for me unwelcome visits. One of them is the, the leader of this fucking right-wing populist party called Chega, with his fake intentions capitalizing on immigration yeah the thing I've talked about yesterday and it visited my hometown he had a lot of votes there which I will abstain to comment on because it's the town where I grew up it's where I'm from and the other visit which really annoyed me, and I have to be sincere with you. I really, it really bothers me this one, because in both cases, they are both a big waste of uh, taxpayer money, fucking fooling around with my taxes. Both of these motherfuckers. So the other one, as I was saying, was Mr. Mr. Zelensky, Volodymyr Zelensky, the, you know, the dictator from Ukraine. No, I, th I don't think I'm stating it wrong here now, because, I mean, his term has finished. He keeps being in power. No opposition, no elections, no nothing. And he is here, and the, the, our recently elected Prime Minister simply opened, spread his cheeks wide and bent over. This is how I'm, I'm sorry, this, this is really bothering. And bent over. And Mr. Elensky got away with 126 million euros. Of course, it's nothing for what? For all the cocaine that, for all the, all that, the money that uh, he consumes. But it's a lot to us. Especially when Portugal struggles to give decent services, decent public services, decent public education, decent public health care, which is still quite decent, but has been under attack now for many years, neoliberal government after neoliberal government, plus the fucking European Union. We are being screwed big time. And, and, and this just happens just like that. It's just, it's just, it, it comes and... He waves 126 million in his pocket, off he goes, signs some pacts, some bilateral pacts. Portugal, of course, gets under the radar for bad reasons, for the worst reasons. It doesn't make me proud at all. We don't have anything to do with this. We shouldn't be meddling, but we are because we are the whores. The whores, whores, the prostitutes of Europe, which is the prostitute of the United States. So we are the prostitute of the prostitute. And so sovereignty doesn't mean anything anymore. And these guys come here, of course, they are the, a protectorate from NATO. They come here, they demand we give, simple as that. And then you, you have the fucking Portuguese mainstream media, which is writing articles like, oh, Portugal has been lagging behind uh, uh, concerning the millions given to Ukraine, if you compare it to other European countries. What's the point? What's the point? What's the... This is no longer... This is a kleptocracy. This is a... I don't want, 
okay. I don't want to be censored. But maybe I maybe I will be anyway, I don't know. But it really pisses me off with all the things, all the public discussions, political discussions we have in the parliament. And then we have this guy just coming begging for more money for weapons. Most of the money goes no no one knows where. It has a lot of homes, a lot of personal assets worth millions. His wife lives uh, lives a luxury life. He doesn't give a shit about his people. Neither our prime minister. We are just fulfilling the agenda of the US. That's it. Uh, it's and what bothers me more it's not the it's not that they do these things because I know they, they will do that and even worse if needs be if they see fit they can do even much worse like for example example sending your kids and my kids to war uh, but it's it's I'm not surprised with that because I know we are dealing with this kind of beast we expect this kind of behavior from this beast what bothers me is the passiveness of in this case of the Portuguese people and of the Europeans in general who are just making this budget more fat and more fat each time for the war remember that the European Union and if you still go look to the principles and constitutions and whatever laws uh, the European Union abide by, you still see it's, it's uh, democracy, freedom, peace. It's not. It's utter uh, hypocrisy. It's, um, it's really this kind of money goes to Zelensky without anyone voting for it. But even if... I believe even if we had like a referendum or something, I think people would be full enough to vote yes. Or maybe no. Maybe a surprise. Because I do notice that those Ukrainian flags in the social media profiles have disappeared massively. I think people at least might be in doubt. But a lot of, the, a lot of them are not. They go with the narrative, they go with the propaganda. It's common sense for them. And it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, there is not much to do. But uh, we do know this, that uh, every time we need to something, for example, we need to raise wages to fight poverty to fight poverty we need build housing to fight the housing problems we need better infrastructure we need to modernize our railway for example extend and modernize our railway improve our transportation systems and there are always a big problem in, in some of these investments especially if they our public services always big obstacles the narrative is always you want to take the country to bankruptcy normally the right accuses the left and then they fool people with this narrative for years and then in one second 126 million just out of the window it's uh I always voted in every elections. I never voted in a party that was in power. Uh, I always voted for the Portuguese Communist Party, which are the only ones, the only ones. And you can take my word on this one. This one, it's the truth. It's not just a theory. It's not just my opinion. It is the truth, it's documented. The Portuguese Communist Party is the only party that sees through this and that communicates this and therefore it's completely suppressed or almost completely suppressed to the point of irrelevancy 
within the media noise. It's not only about Ukraine and Zelensky, but also about the, the whole policy of the European Union, which, uh, which the, we were led to believe that the European Union were sending and keep sending funds to us. You know, the lazies from Southern Europe, the lazy people from Southern Europe. But numbers show otherwise. The money they send us, and this they never, they never teach you this. They never tell you this. It's just the money sent to Portugal from the European Union. It's, it's not a oh take this and to improve your life. It's not like that. It's a compensation for things that we cannot do or things that we self-destruct, abiding by the rules of the European Union. So it's compensation money. But if you see the money that goes out of Portugal, the amount is bigger. It's imbalanced. So we are getting poorer every year. Every year. Somehow the illusion of prosperity has been created. But if you look at the numbers, it's fake. It's fake. And we all know, and this is not just a Portuguese thing. It's a... Uh, we all know that uh, a generation could buy a house, the next generation does not buy a house. Or less of that generation buy a house. The generation after, almost none. There was a big portion of a generation who did good, good, uh, achieved middle class in Portugal. The next generation not so much, the other generation had to go to other countries. Highly qualified people. Uh, investments of our public funds in our public uh, education system. And then they just go away and go, go and reach countries like Germany and Belgium and the Netherlands and Sweden and whatnot. So you see we are ran by a bunch of incompetent either that or corrupt or both people and I don't think I've, I've talked about the quality of the leaders in like three or four videos ago don't you have the feeling that the quality of our leaders has nothing to do with the ones from the very recent past uh, when I mean very recent past I mean just some decades ago they're not serious they behave like children they abide by this political science theory which they have to say whatever it suits them in the moment and they, they can just you know turn that around the second later if they need so 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 and uh, and yeah and the big we are we are in, we are covered in this spectrum of uh, misinformation along with bad well well good actors bad politicians and it all serves the purpose of can i say the empire because it does i mean it serves purpose it's, it's not it's not just like random it's not just like chaos because there is you can certain uh, you can notice a certain care for this society to maintain just the balance at the tip just 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 barely enough for people not to uh, rebel 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 against the system you make enough divisions in society you you keep screwing people in general but you make enough divisions and so enough confusion in the information that people are not able to get together and put a term to this. So yeah, I don't know what you think about Ukraine. I don't know what is your opinion, but I think it's it's a big mess. And uh, I'm sorry to say, but it's not Russia's fault. It's not. If you're still on that childhood or childish stance, I'm sorry to say, you go go read some history, some very recent history. And go, go read, I mean, 
go get informed about the characters that have been playing in the Ukraine, uh, that are playing or pulling the strings in the Ukraine policy in the last 10 years. And then come back and tell me. Let me know what you think. I mean, Portugal, yeah, it's again in the center of the attention. I hope, I hope it's not picked up too much on Russian media. <laughs> I want to go back there and safely, right? I don't want to get any hate from the Russians because of, of this shit that my leaders that do not represent me at all are doing. Okay? I hope I see you on the next one.